Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the taxability or lack of for compensation for injuries and sickness. What does that mean? It means when an individual receives some sort of a compensation for damages. Is that amount taxable or not? Well, it all depends. The tax implication for receiving damages vary depending on the harm suffered by the taxpayer. So when the individual pursue compensation, they may receive damages for various reasons. What could be those reasons? Why would you why would you want to receive damages? It is possible that you could have lost some income. You lost your source of income. You could have incurred expenses. You could have had some property damage. Or you could receive compensation for personal injury. So is it taxable, not taxable? It all depends on the type of the specific harm you suffered and what are you trying to get compensated for. This is what we will discuss in this session. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with loss of income, as the title suggests, somehow you are losing income. Well, if that's the case, loss of income of what? Because you were working, now you could not work. You're not producing. Well, if that's the case, you are replacing your income. Well, your income would have been taxable. This amount would be taxable of, as well. Loss of income is typically subject to taxation in similar way as the income it replaces because it's you are substituting your income. Well, your income would have been taxed. This income is taxed as well. However, there are certain exceptions to this rule, particularly when it comes to personal injury, which we'll see more about personal injury in this session. But loss of income, generally speaking, is taxable. Sometimes what happens is you incur expenses. And if you incur expenses, you might ask for compensation for those expenses. Are they taxable or not when you get this compensation? Well, it all depends. If you deducted the expense, if the expense was deducted, the recovery of that expense is taxable. If it's not deducted, then the expense is not considered an income. What does that mean? It means if in year one you took an expense and you you took an expense, you incurred an expense and you deducted this expense. This is in year one. In year two, if you got the income, well, if you deducted the expense, then it's income. Well, if you did not took the ex you did not deduct the expense and they replaced your they reimburse you for that expense, then it's not income. So if the expense was previously deducted, the damage is received. The second topic is incurred expenses. Sometimes what happens is you incur expenses, and as a result, you might get compensated for those expenses. If the expense was not deducted, the recovery of that expense is not considered an income. So simply put, if the expense was not deducted in the prior year, in the prior period, you did not took advantage of that and took a tax deduction when you received it, it's not considered income. If the expense was previously deducted, so if you were able to deduct this expense, in other words, you took a tax deduction, the damage generally received are generally subject to taxation. Well, if you took the deduction, you took advantage of that expense, now you are being reimbursed, the damages, the damages received a subject to taxation. And this is basically, it's going to take us to a separate topic, which is called the tax benefit rule. So if you were able to take advantage of the expense and the expense was reimbursed to you, well, the tax benefit rules will kick in. This is basically how it works, but we're going to work more specific examples. It's one topic by itself, the tax benefit rule, but the incurred expense falls under this category. Sometimes what happened is you sue you want to be compensated because the property your property was damaged could be a car a building so on and so forth when that happened when the property is damaged any payment received 
is considered as if you sold the property or exchange the property now what happened when you sell the property or exchange the property well if the amount received which is consideration received is greater greater exceeds the basis you have a gain so if the money that you received is greater than the basis of the property damaged you have a gain now, if it's a personal property you can't take the deduction because if you sold it you can't take the deduction as well let's talk about personal injury here we're going to have to expand a little bit more on personal injury the big idea behind personal injury is to provide the injured party with an amount that restored them to their pre-injury state so let's assume an individual fall off this step well guess what they broke their ankle they broke their leg their hand whatever happens is now you want to compensate them to a state the pre-injury state this is the whole idea about the personal injury damage this means if the damage were taxable this means if the damage is received were taxable then the after-tax amount will be less than the actual damage is suffered so if you gave someone a thousand dollar and that amount is taxable let's assume their tax rate is 20 percent simply put this individual would only receive 800 as net so resulting resulting in an injury party not being fully compensated therefore what you have to do you have to compensate them for more so it net out to be a thousand dollar if that's what you want to give them but when it comes to personal injury remember we're going to differentiate between two types, and this is important we have personal injury that's considered compensatory damages and personal injury that's punitive damages those two let's talk about let's talk about each one separately starting with personal injury comp compensatory damages well this aims to provide compensation for the harm suffered by the taxpayer for example you hurt your back okay only compensatory damage received for physical personal injury or physical sickness like a back problem can be excluded from the gross income because it's a physical so this include the loss of income related to the physical personal injury or the physical sickness remember we talked about the loss of income that's fine however compensatory damages awarded for emotional distress this is not physical distress emotional cannot be excluded from gross income it means it's taxable unless the amount received is for medical care so you receive the amount and you paid it for medical care for emotional distress that's fine we're not going you're not going to be taxed for that also any amount received for age discrimination or damages to one's reputation cannot be excluded it's included because it's not physical personal injury or physical sickness so compensatory damages for physical personal injury and physical sickness are excluded how about you are suing for punitive damages what's punitive damages is you want to penalize the other party punitive damages are monetary award money you're asking them for money that the responsible party must pay as a form of punishment you are penalize them for their misconduct now this is different unlike unlike compensatory damages which is aimed to compensate the victim punitive damages are intended to penalize the wrongdoer so receiving punitive damages may actually put the put the injured position in a better financial situation than before well what do we need to know about taxation it's subject to taxation so due to the purpose and effect punitive damages are considered part of gross income so punitive damages are taxable unless it's a wrongful incarceration what is wrongful incarceration well if if you're interested in this topic i'm going to advise you watch on netflix a show called the innocence file and basically some people uh, they might they might be sent to jail they might be found guilty by mistake and what happened is what after the dna technology became a very prevalent technology what they did they revisited many evidence and what they find out the dna of the in the dna of the imprisoned person was not found in the crime scene what does that mean it means that person wasn't there but that person was convicted in a court of law so what they did is they released that individual because they were innocent they could not find their dna so damages received as compensation for wrongful incarceration are exempt from taxation and some people if you watch the show they were spent 20 25 years in prison wrongfully imprisoned 
then at the end of the day they found out they were innocent well guess what here they're not going to pay taxes on that if they receive damages this act seclusion applies to individuals who have been convicted of a federal or state crime and subsequently exonerated that means they became innocent in other words if someone was wrongfully imprisoned and later found innocent this is what we're talking about here any financial compensation they receive for the wrongful incarceration is subject to income tax and this is simply fair if not more than fair right because you took basically their life and now you're telling them you know sorry uh we made a mistake so the amount they receive is not is not taxable let's talk about workers compensation what is workers compensation it's a system that provides financial benefits and medical care to employees who have suffered work-related injuries or sickness. Simply put, as a result of working on the job, you suffered some sort of an illness or an injury. The employer will have insurance. That's called workers' compensation insurance. It's a form of insurance that employers are legally required to have in place to do what? To protect their workers. Now here's what's odd about workers' compensation. Payments made to employees are considered lost wages. And generally speaking, when it's lost wages, we assume it's taxable. However, workers' compensation are not considered taxable income. Simply put, what you need to know about workers' compensation, they are excluding. By excluding those compensation, basically what the tax code or what the government is trying to do is to prevent the injured workers from being burdened with additional tax liabilities during this challenging time. Sometimes your injuries could be very, very serious. Simply put, to compensate them for the financial hardship caused by work-related injuries or illness. All in all, workers' compensation, you see this, not taxable. Let's take a look at a few examples to illustrate the concepts. Emily received $200,000 in settlement of a sex dis discrimination against her formal employer. Well, is this a physical injury? And the answer is not. Sex dis discrimination is not a physical injury. It's a non-physical, therefore it's included in income. Nora received $8,000 for damages of her for, to her personal reputation. Okay, is personal reputation physical injury? No. Additionally, she received $35,000 in punitive damages. Are punitive damages taxable? Yes. The $8,000 and the $35,000 are taxable. Blue Corporation, an accrual taxpayer, received $40,000 from a lawsuit filed against its auditor who overcharged for services rendered in the prior year. So, what did we do? We were overcharged the prior year. We paid $40,000 in prior year. What we're trying to do is getting basically reimbursed. Assuming the $40,000 was deductible in the prior year, because we're trying to recover it, then the amount is taxable. So if we took it, if the, if we took this forty thousand dollar as a deduction, then we assumed we took it as a deduction. Therefore, it's taxable now. Lily received twelve thousand dollar compensatory damages and twenty five thousand in punitive damages in a lawsuit she filed against a beauty salon for severe burns she received from using its tanning equipment. Well. What would you say? I would say the punitive, we already know the punitive are included. They are taxable. What about the 12,000? The 12,000 is for physical injury. Severe burns, I would say they are physical injury. Therefore, the 12,000 is not, is not included, but the punitive damages are included. Elise received compensatory damages of $90,000 for pun punitive. Already we know this is going to be taxable, punitive damages and 250,000 from a plastic surgeon who mishandled her rhinoplasty surgery. Well, is that a physical injury? Yes, it is. Therefore, the 250 is tax free, is tax free. However, the punitive damages is not tax free, it's taxable. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources to understand What's included in income, gross income inclusion, gross income exclusion? Those topics are important. We're focusing here on what is excluded, gross income exclusion, but there's always exception to that gross income exclusion. It becomes gross income ex inclusion. Just multiple, mul additional multiple choice, true, false, and additional resources will help you see the big picture. If you're studying for your CPA exam, enrolled agent, or an accounting student, Farhat Lectures is your answer. Good luck.
study hard and of course stay safe